Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Daniel James. And if you're new here, welcome. Today, I want to talk to you about the three steps to ruin your mental health. So let's dive straight in. Number one, consume social media. Now, I'm not anti social media. I think social media is amazing. There's some real benefits to it. The problem is, it's this sort of new thing in relative terms that no one's got an instruction manual for. And for most of us, we don't realize the negative impact is having on our lives. So for me, it's just asking yourself, when you come away from scrolling, you're there doom scrolling, you sat there doing your thing, even five, 10 minutes, just scrolling away, scrolling away. How do you feel when you come off social media? Do you feel empowered? Do you feel great? Do you feel happy? Or do you feel sad, jealous, angry, bitter, resentful, negative, anxious, nervous? What are you consuming on social media because we all know to have great mental health and physical health like we have to consume certain foods we know that you know having junk food it makes us mentally feel slow sluggish uh, and again physically we feel rubbish but what is your mind diet like what are the things you're feeding your mind on a daily basis is it the negativity is it the anger because it's inputs and outputs if you're sat there doom scrolling and comparing yourself to every single person in the world and think, oh, so much more money than me, their life seems amazing, they've got this perfect relationship, that negativity is going to breed negativity in your life. Whereas actually, if you do a bit of a social media audit, get rid of the things that are triggering you. And again, we use the word trigger. The word trigger means they make you think and feel a negative thing. That's all the trigger is. So these things that trigger you, if you remove them and then start to replace them with things that bring you joy, laughter, happiness, that's what mine does. I, I, if I'm ever caught scrolling on social media, which let's be honest, is quite regularly, I'm either learning something, I'm being inspired, or I'm laughing. This, the amount of comedy things that I see is fantastic. And again, I'll sit there, I'll listen to them, and it makes me laugh. So when I come away from social media, I'm not drained. So if you want to ruin your mental health, keep consuming mindless social media without being aware of what it is you're actually consuming. Second way to ruin your mental health is isolating yourself. When I was at my lowest... I'd realized that I had isolated myself from everybody. And if you've ever been or know someone who's been in an abusive relationship, you will know one of the ways they gain so much power is by isolating the person. Isolating somebody is such a dangerous thing. We are social beings. And this is why uh, when you see people that are struggling, a lot of the times they are withdrawn. They withdraw themselves from social situations. They remove themselves from friends. So if you want to ruin your mental health, start to withdraw. Start to push all your friends away. Start to go into your own little bubble and isolate yourself. Because this leads to loneliness. This leads to you getting stuck in your negative thought patterns. And a lot of people say, yeah, but I'm, I'm very introverted. Like, I isolate myself because I'm introverted. And I completely get that. I understand that. I'm what you call an introverted extrovert. Meaning that doing this podcast, I step on stages, that seems like I'm very extroverted. But I'm actually an introvert. Meaning that I enjoy my own company. I enjoy being by myself. I love that. But I'm also very aware that there's a fine line. And when I isolate myself too much, I do become very, very lonely. So if you are someone that's introverted, realize there's a very, very fine line between claiming as your identity, I'm an introvert, therefore I am an isolated person versus actually I'm quite lonely here. So you need to get that balance right. And if you are introverted, are you using that as an excuse not to socialize? Because maybe you don't like big crowds, and that's okay, but there'll be small groups of people that like the same things that you do. It could even be coffee. Like you can go and do one of those like coffee making courses that's out there. So you don't really have to do much, but you're in and around people, like minded people, and you can then start a conversation. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, but by being in a sort of environment, you're going to break down the walls and the barriers of actually speaking and interacting with people, and that can then lead to you making connections. Because it's not necessarily about being around people, but it's about having connections. Because you can be isolated, being by yourself, but have a lot of connections. You can also be in a room full of people, thousands of people, and feel more alone. And you're feeling more alone because there's no connection there. So it's all about finding connection. It's like asking yourself, what do you enjoy? What kind of energy do you want to be around? And putting yourself in those environments as much as you can and making meaningful connections. This is why I love going to the gym. The amount of people and meaningful connections that I've made there just by talking, especially guys when it comes to mental health, the amount of guys I've spoken to about their mental health and we now have a deep, meaningful connection just through talking is profound. So if you want to destroy mental health, number one, consume social media mindlessly. Number two, isolate yourself and don't have any meaningful connections with people. And the third one is play the blame game. If you really want to cripple your mental health, start playing the blame game or carry on playing the blame game. Blame everyone else 
and everything else outside of you for the reason why your life sucks. The blame game is very, very easy to play. And that victim mindset is very easy. You can sit there and you can beat on that victim drum as much as you want to, but all you're going to do is attract more people into your life that share that same kind of victim mindset. Something in your life may have happened to you. It may have been tragic, it may have been awful, not your fault, horrific. Okay, that is not your fault and there's nothing you could do about that. But right now, as a human being, in this moment, it is your responsibility to take control of your life and move it forward. When you play the victim game, when you start to um, um, blame other people outside of you, you are giving your power away. You're giving that person, that thing, that situation, your power and your energy. Take it back. Start to ask yourself, what can I do to take control of my life? Start to take radical responsibility. Realize that no one is coming to save you. You have to come and save yourself. You have to want to come save yourself. You have to be an active participant in your life and in changing your life. If you have been stuck in that blame game, ask yourself, where's that got you? Has it actually improved the situation? You sat there moaning and complaining about that person, thing, situation, has it helped? Maybe at the start it did, which is why you started to get caught up in it and you're now stuck in that cycle. But realize it has not changed your life. It has not actually helped in any way, shape or form. So right now you need to get out, stop, playing the blame game, unless you want to ruin your mental health, in which case, carry on playing, playing it. So if you want to ruin your mental health, scroll on social media mindlessly, isolate yourself with no meaningful connection and keep playing the blame game and get stuck in that victim mindset. If you know someone that is stuck with any of these three things, don't forget to share it with them. Until next time, take it easy.